the DuPont Cavalcade of America, starring John Hodiak. Tonight, the DuPont Company brings you The Red Stocking, starring John Hodiak on the Cavalcade of America. Our star tonight appears by arrangement with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of Romance of Rosie Ridge, starring Van Johnson. The Red Stockings, starring John Hodiak as Al Spaulding on The Cavalcade of America. Where the devil are you? Right here, right here. What's all the shooting about, Judge Hanna? Jonesy, did you have anything to do with this? Uh, in the newspaper, is it? Doggone it, it's the most foolhardy thing anyone could have done. Downright asking for trouble. Maybe, maybe not. Mark my words, Jonesy. It's liable to make Rockford the laughing stock of the whole state. <laughs> That was Rockford, Illinois, the year 1867. There was a game called baseball. Not the baseball of turnstiles clicking to the entrance of millions. Not the baseball of high-salaried players. In fact, no one got paid for playing it. But that didn't keep Rockford, Illinois, from being the hottest baseball town in the country. And the interest centered around one young man, recently graduated from high school. Just now, we find him walking in on the argument between Judge Hanna and Mr. Jones. Now, 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 Al Spaulding, what do you say about well, this? I didn't have anything to do with it. Mr. Jones sent the challenge to the Washington Nationals. Yeah, darn tootin' I did. I figured it was time somebody took him into camp. The best team in the East. Why, why, they've beaten all the big teams. Well, Goliath had a mighty fine record. Four little David, give him one where it counted. Judge, I think we've got a chance. You're a fine pitcher, Al, best in these parts, but... Well, playing against a big team like that... Well, we I... can't get killed for trying. That's what I say. Can't get killed for trying. Oh, good morning, Miss Green. Morning, Mr. Jones. Judge. Good morning. Good morning. Five pounds of sugar, please. All uh, right, right away, Miss Green. Uh, now, look, Judge, I, I, I... Now, maybe we should have waited a while. We've got a pretty good little team here, but yeah, I don't... Too... Oh, we'll never know how good until we play a really big team like the Washingtons, Judge. But, Al, the Washingtons... I'd like five pounds of sugar, Mr. Jones. Yeah, all right, Miss Green. Uh, Judge, now, Al here can curve a baseball like that, uh, that, that fella coming. I know Al's good. You don't have to tell me that. But Washington's got pitchers, too. Well, maybe we can hit him. Ross Barnes got a good eye. My sugar, please. You ain't got no civic pride, Judge. No sip. Listen... I got more in my little finger than you've got in your head. Well, then how come you didn't think of challenging the Washingtons? Because I think maybe it's stepping out of our class. No, I don't think so. Do but I, I get my is, sugar or don't I? Huh? Oh, oh yes, yes, yes. Al, uh, get Mrs. Green five pounds of baseball. Uh, I mean... Uh... Never mind. By the time I get waited on in this store or any other place in town, I could grow my own sugar. Baseball, morning, noon, and night. Now, what got into her? And why should she come in here if she didn't want to buy nothing? Is anyone here? Is anyone here? Just a minute. Oh, yes, ma'am. What can I do for you? Oh... I, uh, I'd like to look at some name soup, please. Uh, name, name soup? Yes, that's right, name soup. Well, well, what do you do with it? Eat it? Uh, no, you make petticoats out of it. It's material. That's it there, that bolt on the shelf right behind you. And I want enough to make a petticoat for myself. Oh, oh sure, sure. Yes, ma'am. Enough for a... a... Please, uh, wait a minute. I'm not that large. <laughs> oh, oh I, I'm, I'm sorry. But you see, you're the first name soak that... I mean, you're the first petticoat. I'm, I'm... <laughs> Never mind. I'll take the material. Oh, uh, wait a minute. Yes? Are you going to the game tomorrow? Well, I hadn't thought about it, Mr. Spaulding. Oh, you know me? Oh, yes. I can't help but know about you and baseball in this town. You're the pitcher for Rockford. Mm-hmm. You, um... 
Think you can beat the Washington Nationals? Well, we're going to try, Miss... Miss... Miss Keith. Sarah Josephine Keith. How do you do? Have, have you ever seen a baseball game, Miss Keith? No. In the first place, I don't understand the game. Oh, well, we can fix that. It, it's easy. I can explain it in ten minutes. Well, I haven't got time now. Well, maybe tonight I could call on you. Well, if you'd like to. Fine. I can explain the game in a couple of hours. <laughs> you said ten minutes. Oh, uh, well, uh, it takes more time to explain the fine points. It's funny I never saw you before today. Well, I'm just visiting Rockford. Besides, no one in this town is aware of anything but baseball. <laughs> Everybody's excited about the big game with the Washingtons. But it's so silly. It's just a game. Oh, no. It's, it's more than that. How can it be? Oh, wait a minute. Let's sit down here, hmm? Well, all right. Oh, gee, what a pretty night. Yes. It's wonderful. Know what a moon like that means? No. What's it mean, Al? Good weather for the game tomorrow. Game, baseball, that's all you've talked about this evening. Oh, I I'm sorry. Are you mad? No, but I'd just like to know why baseball is so wonderful. Oh, you'll see. It'll kind of get you. It's not just the excitement from the players, but for everybody. Well, it seems awfully silly to me. Oh, but it isn't. It it it's good. I wish I could tell you a story old Doc told me. You don't know Doc, but... Anyway, when he got back from Gettysburg, he told me this story. He said, once a northern and southern regiment were camped near each other. The soldiers got joshing back and forth, and somebody yelled they could lick the other side at baseball. Really? Yeah, sure. Well, the officers acted like they didn't see, and the soldiers, northern and southern, went out to a field and played baseball. They forgot the war? Well, Doc said it was pretty hard to go on fighting afterward. Oh, is that true, Al? Oh, sure. Doc wouldn't joke about anything like that. Doc taught me all he knew about the game. Because he said it was a game everybody could enjoy. Forget their troubles watching it. I see. Al. What? If, if you like baseball so much, why don't you play it all the time? Because I can't. It's a game. Nobody gets paid for playing it. and I have to work. Oh, I see. I've got a mother and brother to support. That's why tomorrow's game is so important. It'll be my last. Oh. Al? What, Sarah Jo? I'll be at that game tomorrow. Al? Yeah, Al's folding. Oh, hello, Judge Hannah. How do you feel, boy? Oh, all right, I guess. Sure, sure. Remember, this is just another baseball game. No, it's not, Judge. I guess you're right, Al. You're gunning for big game today. And they are big. Mm. Oh, I oh, almost forgot. Miss Keith wanted me to tell you good luck. Oh, thanks, Judge. Uh, hello, Judge. Uh, hi, Ross. You better get warmed up, Al. I guess so. Oh, wait. Wait, here comes their captain. Hello. Uh, are you spoiling? Yes. Hello there. Hiya. Well, uh, here's our, uh, our lineup. Any special rules for out here? No, I guess not. Oh, good enough. <clears throat> they, uh, they, they uh, tell me you throw a pretty fair curve. <laughs> Maybe. Uh-huh. Well, good luck, Spaulding. Same to you. Thanks. See you on the field. <laughs> <laughs> What's funny, Judge? <laughs> Did you see his face? What about it? Looked as nervous as you two. Oh. Al, maybe they're not so sure of themselves either. He asked you about your curve, didn't he? Hey, look at this lineup. Their leadoff man. He hit three home runs in one game two weeks ago. Oh, did he? Yeah. That was two weeks ago, boys. Today might be different. Now get out there and make it different. Take your time now. Remember, this first guy's a heavy hitter. I'm ready. All right, old boy. Wind it around his neck. Come on, boy. Come on, boy. Hey, Al. Al, he bit on that 
turf. He, he topped the ball and made an easy grounder. <laughs> you made him bite on one he didn't like. Yeah, Ross. I'm going to keep feeding them curves. I have an idea they don't like them. Washington Nationals. Oh, oh. Gentlemen, that's a headline. <laughs> and don't forget, the star pitcher's working in my store. Well, now, <laughs> wait a minute, Mr. Jones. Ross Barnes and the rest of the boys did some good work out on the field. Rockford's got the best darn team in the world. Ow, ow. Oh, oh, excuse me. Uh, uh, Ross, Jonesy, I got a few things I want to talk over with you. Huh? Oh, 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 sure. But uh, what do we talk about, Judge? We'll find something. We'll find something. Come on. Al, oh, you were wonderful. And so was the game. You like baseball now, huh? I love it. I knew you would. Oh, I'll tell them all about it when I get back home. What? Get back home? Oh, I forgot to tell you. My vacation's over. I'm going back to Boston tomorrow. Well, do you have to go? I have to go back to school. Oh. Well, when will we see each other again? Maybe you'll come to Boston someday. Me? I don't think so. I've got to work now. The game's over. Well, I know, but maybe... Oh, gee. It's funny, but winning that game today just doesn't seem important anymore. But it is important. Yes, but it's over now. I'm not a kid anymore. I stopped being one when the last play was called today. Maybe something will work out for you. And, Al, whatever you do... Don't ever give up baseball. Mom! Oh, Mom, I got an offer of another job. Well, that's wonderful, Al. But where? A and it pays $40 a week, 37 more than I'm getting now. Dear, for doing what? Working as a clerk in a warehouse. Warehouse? Mm -hmm. But there's none in Rockford that would pay that money. Hell, what are you talking about? Well, today, a, a man named Brown offered me that much to work in his warehouse in Chicago. But uh, why did he come here? How did he pick you? Well, he saw the game the other day. Oh. And he, he wants me to play on the Chicago team, too, besides working in the warehouse. Oh, I see. Then uh, it'd really be playing baseball for money. Oh, but I'd be working in his warehouse. No, Al, you know that's not true. You'd be getting paid for playing baseball. But it's the chance of a lifetime, Mom. But... Baseball was a game before... A game to be played in spare time, to enjoy. Playing it for money would take the fun out of it. Look, Mom, baseball's a game, yes. And there are thousands of fellows like me who want to play it, but can't because they've got to earn a living. And there are thousands more who can't play, but want to watch it. But, Al... And, and why shouldn't baseball become America's game? Played for money? Well, if it has to be, Yes. Well, $40 is a lot of money. I can send you some, save, and maybe later. Sarah Josephine? Yes. <laughs> All right, Al. If it's what you want. It is, Mom. Maybe I'm wrong, but I'm going to play baseball, and I'm going to try to make it everybody's game. You are listening to The Red Stockings, starring John Hodiak as Al Spaulding on The Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. Al Spaulding, pitcher for the Rockford, Illinois baseball team, pitches against and beats the Washington Nationals. He's offered a job in a warehouse in Chicago and the chance to play for the Chicago team. As the second part of our story opens, Al has been in Chicago for some time. It is a few minutes after a game. Al approaches one of the other players on the team. Hey, uh, Nielsen. Sandy. Huh? Oh, Al. You got a minute? Well, I, uh, got something to do, and, uh... All right, what's on your mind? Well, when I threw Samuels that curve, he hit it. So? was an easy ball on the ground right into your hands. What are you getting at? Well, uh, you dropped it. So? I made an error. Well, it lost the game for us. All right, we lost the game. What of it? Well, nothing much, Sandy, but it's, it's just that... 
Well, how about being a little more careful next time, hmm? Maybe you were overconfident about that ground. Look, Spaulding, I haven't got time to stand here talking. I missed a ground ball. We lost the game. Ever see any player who didn't make an error? Well, don't get mad about it, Sandy. Well, who's getting mad? Just mind your own business. You pitch, I'll play third. That all right? Sure. Sure it is. All right. If I make an error, forget it. Don't holler your head off. What's the matter, Al? Oh, uh, hello, Harry. What did Sandy get so sore about? Oh, maybe he just doesn't like to be told about mistakes. Well, but everybody else takes it good-naturedly. Sure, sure. There's something awful funny. He dropped a ball yesterday, too. I wonder what's the matter. <laughs> Come in, Al. Sit down. Oh, you're, uh, Mr. Groley, huh? Yeah, yeah, that's right. The ball player's best friend. <laughs> I got you a message that you wanted to see me. What about? I, uh, I said it was important, didn't I? Yes. All right, it is. To you. But I don't even know you. Oh, <laughs> we'll fix that up right now, huh? This, uh, this is gonna mean a thousand dollars to you. What are you talking about? Now, listen. I, I got a friend... I want Chicago to lose tomorrow. <laughs> well, that's too bad. We're going to win. Yeah? Well, uh, this friend will pay you $1,000 if you don't. Say that again. Now, look. All you have to do, Al, is forget the curves a couple of times, see? Go easy. Put them in a little slow. Well, now, wait a minute, Groley. Think about it, Spaulding. What are you getting, $40 a week? You got a mother and a brother? Figuring I'm getting married someday. Don't say the rest of it, Groley. What's the matter? <laughs> Are you shocked? Now, look, kid, we're making a business out of this. People like to see the game. Some people even like to bet on them. Now, uh, my friends take bets. But sure ones, you understand? Nielsen. Sandy Nielsen. That, that's why he muffed that easy grounder, yes. It could be. Nielsen's smart. Why don't you be? Never mind. Now, look, we pay right after the game. Look at you, going along on a $40 salary when you can make 50 times that much by throwing the right ball at the right time. Shut up! Don't be sore. And don't be pure, Spaulding. A few games lost, what's the difference to you? You'll be a few thousand to the good, and then you can forget baseball. Set yourself up in business, get married. Why, you dirty... Let, let go! What are you trying to do? Let go of me! All right. What's the matter with you? You're not worth a punch in the nose. But I'll tell you something, Groley. I'm going to do everything I can to put men like you out of business. Yeah? <laughs> it's funny. Very funny. We're in solid. We'll see about that. I've got other ideas. Now, wait a minute. You've got to listen to me, Ross. Nothing doing, Al. I can't play ball for money. Listen, I've been offered 1400 a year to play for the Boston Red Stockings, and I'm taking it. Al, we had a lot of fun playing ball. Now, now you talk about getting money for it. Well, I told you why. I told you about Groley. Sure, sure, but, but he's only one man. No. There are a lot like him. I've seen him, Ross. Walking around, collecting bets, making bets. Right out in the open. And I've seen something else. What? I've seen people get up and leave a game because they knew something was wrong. They know what's happening, and, and they get disgusted with the game. Well, I... And, and if men were paid to play baseball... They wouldn't have to listen to men like Groley. Well, you, you think the public could like it if they knew the players were paid? They do. The Cincinnati team's been professional for some time now. And look at the crowds they draw. Ross, come with me to Boston. Play second base and get paid honestly. There are other players who feel the same as I do. Well, all right, Al. If that's the way it is. It is. Go in this with me and we'll make baseball our national game. <laughs> Pitcher for the champion Boston Red Stockings. Uh-huh. What's the matter with you? Aren't you glad? Oh, well, sure, but... But what? Sarah Joe, remember the day back in Rockford you said maybe something would work out for me? Uh-huh. Well, something has. Yes, but... Well, look, someday I'm going to quit baseball. Quit? Well, you can't. Well, I've got an idea, honey. I want to go into business. Make sporting goods, baseballs, bats, gloves. You know, there are a lot of kids who'd like to play the game, but they can't get equipment, good equipment. Well, it's 
It's a wonderful idea, but what are you leading up to? Well, I'm trying to ask you to marry me. No, no, wait, now, don't say anything. We'll wait until I get out of baseball, get set up in business. Then. Why wait, Al? Oh, well, look, honey, you're your father. What about him? Well, maybe he wouldn't like a baseball player for a son-in-law. Let's ask him. He's in the other room. Oh, but honey, this is so sudden. <laughs> I'm supposed to say that. Yes, but... Uh, <laughs> Come on, he's not so terrible. No, may maybe we'd better wait a while. I could write him a letter. Shh. Father, may we come in? Yes, yeah, certainly, dear, certainly. Come on. <laughs> Father, you know Mr. Spaulding. Oh, yes, yes, the, uh, the baseball fellow. Sarah Jo. <laughs> Father... Al and I want to be married. Uh, what? Well, you see, Mr. Keith... Hey, you play baseball for a living? Yes, sir. I do. There's nothing wrong with that, Father. I, I think I'll be the judge of that. Uh, Mr. Spaulding, do you have any immediate prospects? Oh, well, I plan to go into business someday and make sporting goods. Uh, oh, I see. But I, I should like some time to think this over. Oh, my baseball. Excuse me, Mr. Spaulding and Sarah Joe. I really have to think about this. I knew it. He doesn't like me, or what I do for a living. Al, listen, leave it to me. He may be a little stunned right now. Stunned? He was practically unconscious. <laughs> oh, no, honey, it's, it's just no good with him. Now, listen, now, don't be silly. Go right in and talk to him. He went to the game today. He saw you pitch. What'd he say? Well, you go in and find out. Yes, hey, Sarah Joe. Uh, Mr. Spaulding. Yes, Father. Come on, Al. Uh, good evening, Mr. Keith. Well, good evening, Mr. Spaulding. Uh, how, how did you like the game? Did you enjoy it? Yes, yes, I I think I did. Of course, some points escaped me, but I, I think you can explain. Well, yes, sir, but Sarah Joe and I... Uh, tell the... me, when the gentleman standing with a large stick strikes at the ball and, and deflects it, what does that mean? Well, that's a foul ball, but, sir, Mr. Keith, Sarah and I... Foul ball. Well, that's good. <laughs> well, that's very good. Now, when the gentleman strikes the ball and it rolls along the ground... Father, Al wants to talk to you about something. Yes, well, you run along, my dear. I should like to talk to Al. But, Father... Al, I... when you deliver the ball to the catcher, I noticed a deflection in the uh, trajectory. Can you tell me how that's done? Well, m Mr. Keith, I'll write a book on baseball. You'll get the first copy. Now, I'd and, like... And another thing. When the gentlemen uh, run around the uh, bases, is it necessary for each one to place his foot on the base? You know, it seems a waste of time. Well, Mr. Keith, I... <laughs> <laughs> Never mind, Al. I think everything's going to be all right. Sarah Joe, look, we're going to take the team around the world playing exhibition games. Baseball's catching on all over. <laughs> It's a great thing, Ross. We're forming a league of teams, the National League. Baseball's spreading. The big cities are all forming teams. I can quit now, Sarah Jo, and go into business. Quit? But you can. Yes, I can. Because baseball's where I wanted it to be. Now it's time I caught up with another dream. To go into business and make good baseball equipment so everyone can play. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, a dinner given in a man's honor always places him at a disadvantage. Particularly tonight when I follow DeWolf Hopper and Mark Twain in the lineup. <laughs> but I would like to say one thing, and that is to correct a mistake. Mr. Twain said I gave you America's game. I didn't. You gave it to yourselves. It's your game. And you made it that because it's a game where there's no faking at the plate. There's no bluffing in the pitcher's box. There's no substitute for hard playing and clean sportsmanship. I won't make a long speech. I just want to thank those who had faith with me. My wife, Ross Barnes, and all the others. And let's hope the years to come see baseball continue to grow. Grow as its country has grown. In fair play and sportsmanship. Now, here is Jane 
Whitman speaking for DuPont. Next Monday evening, the DuPont Cavalcade will star Lee Bowman as Lieutenant Andrew Rowan, who accepted one of the toughest assignments ever handed out by our military intelligence. Cavalcade's drama is the seldom-told real-life story of the 40-year-old lieutenant, whose courageous exploit was immortalized in Albert Hubbard's celebrated editorial, The Message to Garcia. Be sure to listen next Monday night to Lee Bowman in Cavalcade's drama, Mission to Cuba. The music for the DuPont Cavalcade is composed and conducted by Robert Armbruster. Tonight's Cavalcade was written by Lucy Kennedy. Featured in the cast with John Hodiak were Mary Jane Croft as Sarah, Fred Howard as Jones, Gail Gordon as the judge, Jane Morgan as the mother, and Gerald Moore as Groley. This is Frank Bingman inviting you to listen next week to Mission to Cuba, starring Lee Bowman on the Cavalcade of America, brought to you by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. The DuPont Cavalcade of America came to you from Hollywood. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.